The program is Road to 2023 on Africa Independent Television. And joining me in the studio for our discussion on the economic blueprint of political parties is Adakole Ijogi. Ijogi is a political economist, and we also have the presidential candidate of the Africa Action Congress, AAC, Omoyele Yele Shogure. You're welcome to the uh, program. Thank you very much. All right, I think I would like to begin because we have looked at uh, some of the uh, uh, plans, you know, in summary, of course. We've looked at the Umadi Muhammad ticket of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, which is majorly the diversification of the monocultural lifeline through effective solid mineral exploitation and developing the manufacturing sec uh, sector. The um, Atiku Kowatike says his vision is to transform Nigeria into a modern economy that works for its people and enables it to take its rightful place among the top 20 economies of the world. And uh, uh, policies will be jobs-centered, especially for the teeming youth population. Tinubu Shetima renewed hope promises, national infrastructure campaign, and to seek import substitution and tax reforms. So let's uh, ask um, the presidential candidate of the Africa Action Congress, Omoyele Shuwure, what is your economic plan? Well, it's uh, based on three plans. And one is to enhance uh, national security, uh, to enhance self-sufficiency, and economic growth and development. Yes, the, uh, the economic aspect is what we're really interested so, in. So the, the economic aspect uh, likely is based on expanding manufacturing diversifying the power sector uh, you know when I mean diversifying is uh, decentralizing it through uh, the use of energy mixes and just directly uh, also inform Nigerians that that power sector growth would rely on uh, transition of uh, power from where we are now to a more green power uh, source for the country using solar tidal uh, and uh, other green energy sources that can easily be grown, developed to enhance the availability of power, you know, energy for the Nigerian people, uh, so that the manufacturing we want, the economic development that we've been speaking about, is not existing uh, without uh -huh. any uh, sta leg to stand on. So, because we hear this all the time from the other parties, they want to modernize Nigeria, but you can't modernize the country that is in darkness and has no immediate resolution to that problem of lack of energy. There's no country in the world in the history of mankind that's ever modernized, that has ever developed without energy. It was the first industrial revolution of all times came because of the discovery of a variety of energy mixes and sources. And the steam, en you know, the steam engine, for example, is credited with a lot of industrial development around the world that has ballooned into where we are today. All right, I, 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 is that all? Just decentralizing the power sector, no, expanding manufacturing? No, no, we talked about power, we talk about manufacturing. About manufacturing yes. We also have spoken mm. about renationalizing uh, a lot of uh, the companies that belong to Nigeria that are now private in private hands, sold mm. at giveaway prices. Why Nigeria continues to subsidize those? Uh, we also have very serious plan to fix our refineries and create mm -hmm. smaller, medium, and small-scale refineries that can refine petroleum products uh, so that they make them available to our people and that our people don't go and be praying for petroleum products whenever there's Christmas or you know, the holiday season. This has been a major problem. Nigeria has been assisting an individual to build a refinery by investing $2.5 billion in his own private refinery project. But Nigeria couldn't fix his own four refineries which would have eliminated what we call a uh, fuel scarcity. Not today, not yesterday, but since it began uh, in the 80s and 90s. Now, when you talk about manufacturing, we know that the uh, manufacturing uh, uh, sector has been uh, in the doldrums basically because of lack of power, which you have addressed. Yes. There are also industries that have died, very viable industries that have died over the years. You talk about the... Um, uh, 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 com 
companies and like Nitem Tech, yeah. the textile industry. Yeah, right. yeah, the textile industry, which used to be so so. And so then no, the simple th 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 there are some, you know, like even the palm produce that we have yeah. in the country. There, so what are your plans? Do so, you intend so to revive this sector? I grew up beside a, um, a palm oil producing company in Okitupupa in Ondo State. Not only does it provide uh, jobs for our people, it was a source of uh, uh, development for the area because somehow they also ensure that, you know, even if it's dead road, they're done from time to time. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it today, the cost, this, the cost of a sale of palm oil or a barrel of palm oil is higher than that of a barrel of uh, crude oil. Yes. So it looks like these areas were deliberately destroyed. You know, we were the ones who gave palm you know, kernel fruits, I mean uh, seeds, to Malaysia. Uh, and uh, we are now importing palm oil uh, from them. And so we deliver the people who came and governed Nigeria saw oil in large quantities, I mean crude oil, and just started binging on it. It's like they were drinking and they got drunk on it and forgot that you need to invest in other areas that has more economic value than crude. Yes, it is true that crude produces over 6,000 products when it's distilled, but crude is also going out of business. But palm oil is still in business. It's still, it's, in fact, it's doing better in business. The reason why most of the companies that we're talking about died in natural death was because we, the, the cost of production in Nigeria is higher. It is easier for you today to make your print and buy it from China than to buy from Kaduna, mm -hmm. because by the time the person in Kaduna is calculating the cost of buying diesel, overnight to produce just what you are wearing. Mm -hmm. The person in China, by the time they are done with it, with their massive power, in, I mean investment in power, you know, the cost of production is cheaper over there. The cost of even flying into Nigeria to get to you, you get to you faster than the person in Kaduna will get it to you. Because we also don't have means of distributing goods and services, I mean distributing goods, because our services sector has also died a natural death with it. Look at the banks. The banks are suffering today because they are, technical you know, staff have left the country. So what they left is what they are managing. Most of them have to relocate to Ghana because the backbones for internet in Ghana and even Benin Republic and Togo is better than the one you have here. The cost of internet in Nigeria is more expensive than that of the US. You know, I have unlimited internet. Call, voice for $50 in the US. You cannot spend $50 at my level in a week to get internet. And you must get all the three <laughs> networks of four before you can be sure. You have, you have to walk to a certain room to get ATEL, walk to another room to get MTEL, walk to another place. To, whereas all these are not necessary. If at the time they were building their towers, you, did, you made sure that all the towers deal with, you know, the towers belong to one person and all the companies can rent. just rent from them. Yep. But because of stupid competition, all of them were building towers, using diesel to power the t tower. If the diesel runs out, there's no network. So everything goes back to energy. So you can't escape it if you don't have people who understand how these things work interrelatedly. You cannot have the kind of economic progress you need. Economic progress is not, you know, formulas. People just make it sound like, oh, by the time you talk about micro and macroeconomic policy, now you confuse the public. Yes, you're good. There was a time a lie was told in this country <coughs> that Nigeria was doing better than South Africa. <laughs> South Africa has 62,000 megawatts of electricity. You have seven. Only 3,000 is working. I mean, that can actually power industries at home, which is not enough to power the London underground, just one line. And you are lying that your economy is better than that of South Africa. You know, and we accepted the lie. You also talked about investing in other areas. What areas would this be? We invest in education particularly. Uh, of course, people talk about security because that is what is confronting us right away. But those who understand the way the world works, insecurity don't happen overnight. They happen over a series of missteps and mistakes made by countries. One of those major mistakes is not to invest in young people. When you don't invest in young people, like uh, they usually the say in the human US. Human capital development. Yes, if you don't develop the human being, if you don't develop in young people, I mean, invest in young people, you, would start, you better start uh, sewing prison uniforms for them. And now it costs more money to feed a prisoner in Nigeria. I heard it's about 14,000 naira per day, which they never get to eat anyways. Then the Nigerian government is investing in kids that are going to university. 
Are you getting my point? So that investment is compulsory. We've gotten to the point where we must take out the 20 million kids off the street. Make it a crime for the parents not to send their children to school. Also make it for a crime for, you know, for governments not to you know, provide schooling uh, education because it's actually a constitutional provision in Nigeria that you must invest in the welfare and the well-being of the people. So you from there can expect a future that's guaranteed to develop. See, we're talking about oil here, we're talking about agriculture. For the first time in nine years, as of today, is the first time in nine years that someone who is not in the tech industry is a billionaire. It just briefly, yes, I think it was uh, some guy who, uh, who appended um, Elon Musk. Every other person, go and look at the 10 best performing companies in the world. Only one other company is part of it, Saudi Aramco. The rest is tech. tech. Where do tech people come from? They come from universities, mostly. They, yeah, they come from investment in education. They don't come from voodoo. You know, or churches, or mosques. All right. <laughs> so Let's quickly look at uh, what you intend to do with the uh, solid mineral subsector. You know that uh, the length and breadth of the north, from north central to the other parts of the north, is lined up with different uh, uh, um, solid minerals. Yes. So the, the most important thing is not to be talking about solid minerals in abstract. And we do that a lot in Nigeria. My state, since we were in primary school, they've been saying that I don't know has bitumen. You know, but nobody has been able to confirm the commercial value of Ondo bitumen. You know, I've been asking since I was born, which one is more viable uh, between Ondo cannabis and the bitumen that we'll be hearing about? The bitumen is probably not valuable, but people just make up stories and say, hey, you know, we have bitumen, you know, we have the largest concentration of bitumen in the world from Ondo to Imo State. But nobody has been able to tap into that because it's probably an urban legend. We just made up the story that we have commercially viable. But I guarantee you that if uh, bitumen is as commercially viable as it's been talked about, the West will be all over the area. They don't mess with resources of that nature. So let's be sure that the resources where the solid minerals we are talking about actually do exist in commercial uh, quantity. Don't go and do what Buhari did in Bauchi the other day. They just went and pointed to a place and said, there's oil. No infrastructure around it. No development around it. Just because you want to make northerners feel good. I'm not saying there's no oil in the north. But there's nothing to show that that oil is of the kind of quantity that we want. And it's not an ego-driven oil find. So we expect to know more as uh, events unfold there. Thank you so much, Oge Ihimekme. Yes, our correspondent, Oge Himepe, at the emergency meeting of the Labour Party in Abuja. Uh, certainly, there are rumbles within the Labour Party. And at this period, uh, towards the election, hmm, what do you think, Adakole Jogi? Well, political parties will always have um, some kind of uh, internal rumblings because uh, political interests are diverse. Some people want to hold on to their positions. Some people want to remove the other person. This person is looking for money and stuff like that. It's just, the thing is about the, the culture of the Nigerian people cannot be dissociated from how, how we operate political parties. So I just think, yeah, it, it, will, sort itself, it will sort itself out. Even the PDP is in, yeah, still in their own crisis. The APC still has its own. So I don't know if Shoure has crisis in his own party. Uh, he, not he, he had his own first year. There was a time they were calling. At, I think you just came out of the courts too. Well, you know, our own type of crisis is different. Uh, you know, my position at Labour Party is uh, it's an orphanage home. So <laughs> this is what happened in orphanage homes. You bring all kinds of kids who are looking <laughs> for spaces to uh, fulfill their ambition. You know, the <laughs> Labour Party is an old party and it's always had this kind of problem because the, it's... When you have a labor party without workers, that's what you get. All right, le 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 because they're not here to reply you right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. They okay, can so reply me on Twitter. We always, uh, we, uh, we uh, perpetually okay. at, uh, at this. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Adakole, let's look at this issue of import substitution and tax reforms. Which of the candidates? Uh, Tinubu Shetima. Oh, okay. I think, I think from all the, the manifestos I, I read, I think the, the, the APC one is one that is poor. It's not that detailed. They're talking about import substitution and tax reforms. And then give us the details. Those are punchlines. When you say tax reform, what do you mean? 
Are you going to reduce the tax? Are you going to tax, increase the tax of the rich? What, what do you mean? When you say import substitution, those are just people just come on uh, national TV or sit, sit, sit in, their, in their homes and say uh, the words that Nigerians like to use, diversification of the economy. And I've always maintained the position that the Nigerian economy is already diversified. Mm -hmm. What you need to diversify is our revenue base, our revenue sources. So when you say import substitution, no, but just permit me just to comment on the, uh, the PDP's uh, 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 manifesto. Yes. And I just want to pick out something there that I found interesting. In the PDP ah. manifesto, the Alaji Atiku Abakar said he's going to... Um, uh, Transform Nigeria into a modern No, those are punchlines. Go to the details. Okay, he said that he's going to uh, grow the GDP per capita to yes. $5,000 by the year 2030. But you see, that looks, that sounds nice. But if you interrogate it further, by the year 2030, using a GDP growth rate of 3.5%, sorry, a population growth rate of 3.5 or 3%, by 2030, Nigeria will be over 250 million. So how can you increase GDP per capita to 5,000 when our G GDP at current is 445 billion US dollars? Now, to achieve that 5,000 GDP, you have to grow the Nigerian economy to $1.2 trillion. This economy, can you grow that in seven years? This is 2020, 2022. You have eight, eight more years. Is that, is that feasible? So you see, they say the devil is in the details. I can go on and on. Even in Shore's, uh, you see, what he, when he spoke on, on agriculture, I punched a few holes in it. And that, the reason why I will not debate him I'll give him his respect as a candidate. Why but not? We can debate it. Debate. No, no, no. You are a citizen. You know, by this time next year, I'll be president. You won't have the opportunity to be talking to me. So talk to me now. No, let's, the, let's discuss the issues. No, the, is, the, 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 the issue I have with, yes. with, with your own plan on agriculture yeah. is that it's a little bit disconnected mm -hmm. from industrialization. Okay. Now, when you say you want, to, you want to grow food production, which you have in your document, yeah. growing food production, you have to tie that food product production to industrialization. In industrialization, you now have things like storage, transportation, and all of that, plus exports. Now, it, will be, it is just single for you to say food growth. No, no, but you food see, what, what we discuss here, and this very, I'm glad you raised it, and this is why you should, we should, we should, you should talk about it, is that part of our economic agenda is for self-sustainability. For this country, not only to be able to grow food, but to be able to grow food that can feed the nation, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. We also have an industrialization agenda. We have a railway you know, uh, infrastructure project. That's why we call our agenda Spicer Heat, security, power, infrastructure. When you cover the spectrum, you discover that all of these nexuses, you know, if there's a word like that, has been made in the sense that how is it that you grow enough food and we have road and you won't be able to take it to the market? That's already been solved. If I give you modern railway, it means that you can bring tomato to, from the north to the south due time and that those carriages you know, uh, have refrigerating units. That's why we talk about modern economy. And when somebody says to you, and I love the fact that you mentioned that about Atiku, when somebody says to you that they want to modernize Nigeria or they want to grow, what is the meaning of that? <laughs> like you said, it's just like the APC saying that, they want to do uh, import substitution. substitution. It's like they went to an economic book written by that uh, Lawa that I used to write, and you know they had it there. They just copied it and put it. When you ask them, no, we say tax reform. Are you going to tax reform the same way you are doing in Lagos, where the person collecting the tax is different from the person that is spending the money? And so our own, for instance, our tax reform has to do with GDP, a tax to GDP ratio, which is the lowest, you know, around the sub-Saharan African region. Mm -hmm. We have about seven percent. Mm -hmm. We want to grow out of 15%. We don't want to tax anybody. We want to make sure that the rich is paying their own deal their fair share. of their fair share of the taxes. And then you eliminate the 16 trillion naira that goes into all these fake taxes that they give waivers from those who get it from and invest it in the people. 16 trillion naira going to five people, uh, I might be exaggerating, is the same amount of money you can use to revive education, revive your road infrastructure, bring in railway systems that can do the kind of reform and the revolutionizing of the agricultural sector. What we are saying is that instead of buying SUVs, we want to buy tractors so that you can grow enough food. First and foremost, our food needs must be met before we start thinking food about exports. Yes. All right. Thank you.
can I, can I make another yeah, point you, or you, you want to move to, to something? Fast because we want to find out what is trending on social media politically, but just in a moment, you just say okay. what you have to I say. Just, I, just, I, just, I just want to put it out there that after reading the different manifestos from the different political parties, there's one other critical thing that I notice that is missing about the economy, which is they keep talking about stimulating the economy. The growth. So growth. No, just stimulating the economy, stimulating growth. growth. Mm -hmm. the, the way that this, AP, the level of the Nigerian economy, how bad it is, ordinary stimulation of the economy would not work. Yeah, let, let, let me jump into the, this the, as well. Let, we, let we, me just we make my point. Support him. The, yeah. the, 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 the next president has to directly intervene in specific sectors of the economy. Yeah, yeah. It is not to stimulate anymore. If you are saying agriculture, you must practically get those extractors that yeah. he's talking about, give out land, clear the land, provide money support, provide seedling, and get Nigerians to work. All right, and, and, and let's also just quickly add that our own type of agriculture is not only land-based. Agriculture has reached a digital level where you can grow crops without moving out of the city. You know, hydroponic agriculture or this kind of modern agriculture where you can even grow tomato tomatoes inside. In your room. In, yes, inside. All well, right. Past the stage of land, land, land and the uh, soil. All right. So we expect to know more as uh, events unfold there. Thank you so much, Oge Ihimepe. Yes, our correspondent, Oge Ihimepe at the emergency meeting of the Labour Party in Abuja. Uh, certainly there are rumbles within the Labour Party and at this period uh, towards the election. Hmm, what do you think, Adakoli Jogi? Well, political parties will always have um, some kind of uh, internal rumblings because uh, political interests are diverse. Some people want to hold on to their positions. Some people want to remove the other person. This person is looking for money and stuff like that. It's just, the thing is about the, the culture of the Nigerian people cannot be dissociated from uh, how, how we operate political parties. So I just think, yeah, it, it, will, sort itself, it will sort itself out. Even the PDP is in, yeah, still in their own crisis. The APC still has its own. So I don't know if Shore has crisis in his own party. Uh, uh, he, he, he's had his own first year. There was a time they were calling. At, I think you just came out of the court too. Well, you know, our own type of crisis is different. Uh, you know, my position at Labour Party is uh, it's an orphanage home. So <laughs> this is what happened in orphanage homes. You bring all kinds of kids who are looking for <laughs> spaces to uh, fulfill their ambition. You know, the Labour Party is an old party and it's always had this kind of problem because the, it's. When you have a Labour Party without workers, that's what you get. All right, le 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 because they're not here to reply you right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. They okay, can so reply me on Twitter. We always uh, we, we uh, perpetually okay. at, uh, at this. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Adakole, let's look at this issue of import substitution and tax reforms. Which of the candidates? Uh, Tinubu Shetima. Oh, okay. I think I think from all the the manifestos I I read. I think the, the, the APC one is one that is poor. It's not that detailed. They're talking about import substitution and tax reforms. And then give us the details. Those are punchlines. When you say tax reform, what do you mean? Are you going to reduce the tax? Are you going to tax, increase the tax of the rich? What, what do you mean? When you say import substitution, those are just people just come on uh, national TV or see, see, sit in their, in their homes and say uh, words that Nigerians like to use, diversification of the economy. And I've always maintained the position that the Nigerian economy is already diversified. Mm -hmm. What you need to diversify is our revenue base, our re revenue sources. So when you say import substitution, no, but just permit me just to comment on the, uh, the PDP's uh, 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 manifesto. Yes. And I just want to pick out something there that I found interesting. In the PDP uh -huh. manifesto, the Alaji Atiku Abakar said he's going to... Um, uh, Transform Nigeria into a more No, those are punchlines. Go to the details. Okay, he said that he's going to uh, grow the GDP per capita to yes. $5,000 by the year 2030. But you see, th that, looks, that sounds nice. But if you interrogate it further, by the year 2030, using a GDP growth rate of 3.5%, sorry, a population growth rate of 3.5 or 3%, by 2030, Nigeria will be over 250 million. So how can you increase GDP per capita to 5,000 when our G GDP at co current is 
billion US dollars. Now, to achieve that 5,000 GDP, you have to grow the Nigerian economy to 1.2 trillion dollars. This economy, can you grow that in seven years? This is 2020, 2022. You have eight, eight, eight more years. Is that, is that feasible? So you see, they say the devil is in the details. I can go on and on. Even in Shoray's, uh, you see, what he, when he spoke on, on agriculture, I punched a few holes in it. And that, the reason why uh, I will not debate him, I will give him his respect as a candidate. Why but not? We can debate it. No, no, no. You are citizen, you, you know, by this time next year, I'll be president. You won't have the opportunity to be talking to me. So talk to me now. No, let's, the, let's discuss the issues. No, the, is, the, 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 the issue I have with, yes. with, with your own plan on agriculture yes. is that it's a little bit disconnected mm -hmm. from industrialization. Okay. Now, when you say you want, to, you want to grow food production, which you have in your document, yeah. growing food production, you have to tie that food product, production to industrialization. In industrialization, you now have things like storage, transportation, and all of that, plus exports. Now, it, will be, it is just single for you to say food growth. No, no, but you see, what, what we discussed here, and this very, I'm glad you raised it, and this is why you should, we should, we should, you should talk about it, is that part of our economic agenda is for self-sustainability. For this country, not only to be able to grow food, but to be able to grow food that can feed the nation, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. We also have an industrialization agenda. We have a railway you know, uh, infrastructure project. That's why we call our agenda Spicer Heat, security, power, infrastructure. When you cover the spectrum, you discover that all of these nexuses, you know, if there's a word like that, has been made in the sense that how is it that you grow enough food and we have road and you won't be able to take it to the market? That's already been solved. If I give you a modern railway, it means that you can bring tomato to, from the north to the south due time and that those carriages, you know, uh, have refrigerating units. That's why we talk about modern economy. And when somebody says to you, and I love the fact that you mentioned that about Atiku, when somebody says to you that they want to modernize Nigeria or they want to grow, what is the meaning of that? <laughs> like you said, it's just like the APC saying that they want to do uh, import what substitution. substitution. It's like they went to an economic book written by that uh, Lawa that I used to write, and you know, they had it there. They just copied it and put it. When you ask them, no, we say tax reform. Are you going to tax reform the same way you are doing in Lagos? where the person collecting the tax is different from the person that is spending the money. And so our own, for instance, our tax reform has to do with GDP, a tax to GDP ratio, which is the lowest, you know, around the sub-Saharan African region. Mm -hmm. We have about 7%. Mm -hmm. We want to grow out to 15%. We don't want to tax anybody. We want to make sure that the rich is paying their own deal their fair share. of their fair share of the taxes. And then you eliminate the 16 trillion naira that goes into all these fake taxes that they give waivers from those who get it from and invest it in the people. 16 trillion naira going to five people, uh, I might be exaggerating, is the same amount of money you can use to revive education, revive your road infrastructure, bring in railway systems that can do the kind of reform and the revolutionizing of the agricultural sector. What we are saying is that instead of buying SUVs, we want to buy tractors so that you can grow enough food. First and foremost, our food needs must be met before we start thinking Good about exports. Yes. All right, thank you. Can I, can I make another yeah, point you, or you, you want to move to, to something? Because we want to find out what is trending on social media politically, but just in a moment, you just say okay. what you have to I just, say. I just, I, just, I just want to put it out there that after reading the different manifestos from the different political parties, there's one other critical thing that I notice that is missing about the economy, which is they keep talking about stimulating the economy. The growth. So growth. No, just stimulating economy, yeah, stimulating growth. growth. Mm -hmm. the, the way that this, AP, the level of the Nigerian economy, how bad it is, ordinary stimulation on the economy would not work. Let me jump into the, this the, as well. The, we, let me just make my point. The, yeah. the, 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 the next president has to directly intervene in specific sectors of the economy. Yeah, yeah. It is not to stimulate anymore. If you are saying agriculture, you must practically get those extractors that he's talking about, give out land, clear the land, provide money support, provide seedling, and get Nigerians to work. All and, right, let's and, and let's also just quickly add that our own type of agriculture is not only land-based. Agriculture has reached a digital level where you can grow crops without moving out of the city. You know, hydroponic agriculture or this kind of modern agriculture where you can even grow Tomatoes, tomatoes inside. In in, yes, inside. All we right. pass the stage of land, land, land and uh, soil. All right, let's just uh, go to the social media and find out what is trending politically on social media. 
Welcome to Politics on Social Media. I am Omari Day. The cancellation of the PDP primaries in Ebony State is generating reactions. And our first reaction concerning that is from John Terry, who says, how can Abuja nullify a case in Ebony State? Is there no court in that state? Our next comment concerning that is from Chinaka, who says, I thought there is a Supreme Court ruling on this matter already. Moving on to the next story, the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, AAC, Omoyele Showore, has proposed the increase of the minimum wage for Nigerian workers to at least 250,000 Naira if elected president in the 2023 general elections. Showore made this proposal on Thursday while faulting the 80,000 Naira to 100,000 Naira minimum wage proposed by his Labour Party counterpart, Peter Obi. How realistic is this proposal? Let's listen to people's reaction. First from Victor, Mr. Showore, I love you greatly and I also love what you stand for. I identify with your struggles, our struggles, but honestly, we do not need high volumes of cash as minimum wage. What we need is Naira that has good value. Even 1,000 Naira that has good purchasing power is okay. Next up, Midnight says, this man, how are SMEs that employ little labor expected to pay 250,000 per person when the whole business isn't even worth more than 500,000? Okay, moving on, foundational worry picking says, make sure worry calm down. If all these bogus promises are for us to donate to in accounts, we no get she, she. Moving on, presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, while speaking about his political journey in London, charged top campaign operators to grab political power at all costs. Here's the video. Political power is not going to be served in a restaurant. It does not serve in a la carte. It's what we are doing. It's being determined to do it at all costs. Fight for it. Grab it. Snatch it. Also. And run with it. Comment concerning that video is from Arnold Uchena, who says, Tinubu, if your intention is to fix Nigeria, then grabbing power by any means possible is not proper. There must be other reasons why you want po power at all costs. Please campaign properly. Tell Nigerians what you will offer. If they like it, they'll vote for you, like Peter Obi is doing. Moving on, Castle Daniel is saying he literally said, snatch and grab. That is violent a statement. Finally, obedience says, not everything deserves criticism. I'm a student of political science, and I will give Tinubu a 10 over 10 rating for this speech. I can't believe he could make such an intelligent analysis. Finally, Senator Remy Tinubu says, the same faith presidential ticket of the All Progressives Congress, APC, will open a path for a Christian Christian ticket in the future. The APC combination of Bola Tinubu and former Borinu State Governor Kashim Shetima, who are both Muslims, have triggered debates in the country, with many using the ruling party of insensitivity to Nigeria's diversity. Boremi, wife of Bola Tinubu, told a gathering of APC Southwest women in Lagos State that the move will reset Nigeria's political land space. All right, she will see what is trending on social media. And one of them concerns you, uh, presidential candidate of AAC, Omoyele Shogore. How would you quickly react to that? Because we're wrapping up. Yes, uh, I would say that uh, people in Nigeria, especially the poor, uh, don't always get it right when it comes to fighting for their own interests. We are talking about a country where the minimum wage is 30,000 naira, and the maximum wage that we know of is 15 million naira a month, that of a senator and the House of Rep. What I'm saying is that in four years ago, I proposed 100,000. They also condemned me. They said it will cause inflation. But you ask them the question, when the accountant general steals 150 billion naira, does it cause inflation? Does it not, is it not, should it not cause inflation? How much is the cost of living? That is my own position. If you are proposing 100,000 naira in 2022, can you live on 
100,000 Naira today. If your transportation to work and back is 30,000 Naira, food is 30,000 Naira, accommodation is about 50,000 Naira. I carried out a simple poll recently, just on social media, and even students are not surviving on 100,000 Naira. So my proposal is that as long as the purchasing power of the Naira is terrible, there is no Nigerian solid who can survive on 100,000 Naira, and the least anybody can survive on, you know, and it's a bare bone, it's 250,000. That's my proposal. All right, it has nothing to do with, uh, you, know, their propose, you know, their own noise about, oh, it will cost inflation. Well, if stealing doesn't cost inflation, the interest of workers, decent salaries and wages cannot cost inflation because uh, it has to do with the well-being uh, of the all people. Right. Ad Adakoli, uh, the, one of the contributors also made a very va uh, valuable uh, contribution on, the st on strengthening Nigeria's currency. Because I remember when with five pounds in the UK, you could cook very good food and all of those. And, you know, uh, here yes, we, I, you I, need I, thousands. I, I agree. We have, to, we have to really consider how we treat the Nigerian Naira, the value of our currency. We have to halt inflation. We have to, we have to ensure that we fix the, the critical sector, the fundamental sectors of our economy. If we don't do that... I'm sure uh, if, if, when by the time Shoei gets into government in 2023, by 2027, he will still have to increase it to 500,000. No. But you see, the, easy, the thing here is, I agree with why yeah. I agree 30,000 is, is not minimum wage. But I think for the sustainable long run, we need to halt inflation, focus on the value of the currency. All you right, have to thank you the so economy. much. All right. Thank you so, so much. I uh, guess we still have a lot more to yes. talk about concerning Nigeria's economy. Let me thank... Uh, the presidential candidate of the AAC.